Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Cole Wilkins. I'm here with Stephanie Burton and Lisa Tholman, the other members of the Digital Teaching and Learning Team, and we're going to walk through the Swivel Setup Guide along with a live demo at the end of today's presentation. So we're going to jump right into it. So this is the Swivel iOS Setup Guide. Um, everyone should be using a iPad with their swivels. Uh, technically, it will support an Android device, but the district is providing iPads for that use, and that is all we're going to support moving forward. So this is just the quick directory uh, of this presentation. We're going to share uh, a link with this presentation as well, so you can go through it at any time if you need to refer back. And this is kind of a little... Uh, table of contents at the beginning to where you can quickly jump to certain sections if you are just looking for a very quick refresher or information on one particular step. So we're going to be using uh, Teams by Swivel. Uh, that's the new app that is going to control uh, the experience with the Swivel and the um, iPad itself. So you're going to have a Swivel robot that's going to rotate and track you. Basically think of it as like a Lazy Susan type device. Uh, and it's going to have a primary marker that the teacher is going to wear. Uh, you're going to wear that around your neck or you can clip it to your collar. Uh, and you're going to use the Swivel Teams app. And you have potential the capability of also using the Swivel Teams website to do some stuff as well. Now you can do certain things for free and then other things are a paid feature and require a pro license. I think we had a couple of schools that did buy pro licenses but probably the vast majority did not. So, when we're going to live stream or doing our remote learning, you're going to be using the Google Meet app along with the Teams by Swivel app. So, you're going to have to install these on your iPad. Now, if you're using an iPad that was provided by the district, more than likely these iPads are already have these same apps installed for you, so you don't have to worry about it. But this is what you're looking for, Google Meet and Teams by Swivel. Uh, if you're using an iPad that is not enrolled in our mobile device management system, uh, you may have to install these apps yourself. So let's just talk about the robot a little bit and get everybody familiar with it. So it comes with several different grips to fit different devices. Um, so this just walks you through how to change that grip inside you know, where you pull it out and slide it left or right to replace the shim. Um, and then you can insert it back in. So see what fits the device you have best appropriately. Uh, if your iPad has a case on it, more than likely it will not fit with that case, so you may have to remove the iPad from the case to use it inside of the shim or grip. Now down at the bottom you will see they do sell a um, mount that will fit most cases. Even this does not fit all cases, but it will fit most cases. So if this is something that you would like you please check in with your administration at your school if you need that particular mount otherwise just simply remove the case when you're using the iPad with the swivel and then you can put it back in so let's look at the ports on the actual robot itself so you're going to connect the mobile device to that port right in the middle it comes with its own special cable we're going to look at that in a little bit you're going to see the charging base port is that round port at the bottom in the gray area and then you're going to see a USB uh, port that you're going to use uh, possibly with a USB-A to USB-A cable or with the Swivel Link device which will allow you wireless connectivity to not have to have a cable between the actual robot and the computer in the classroom. So the indicator LEDs, you're going to notice that there are two LEDs on the front of the Swivel robot uh, right where the iPad slots into it. So if you see a solid red light on the left that means that the marker is not connected and when you see a solid green light on the right, that means the mobile device is successfully connected. And you're going to have a cable that goes from the back of the swivel robot and plugs into that iPad. It's a uh, lightning cable, and it does come with the cable. Now, if you're using an iPad that does not have lightning on it, you will need a different cable or an adapter. So when you see both lights are lit up green, that means the marker is connected and the device is successfully detected as well. So if you're using a C3 or a C5, the LEDs will be green when any marker is connected. Um, but before you record, always verify that that primary marker status in the Swivel app. And we're going to talk about the markers a little bit later. More than likely, you only have one marker 
Uh, some of the swivel devices might have come with several markers. It just depends on the particular make and model that was ordered, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So again, this is just a quick little video of these uh, LEDs. So right here, you're gonna see that the iPad is slotted into the grip or into the sleeve, but you're gonna see we have two flashing red lights. So what does that mean? Well, the one on the left tells us that the primary marker is not connected. So that means we don't have it turned on or the battery is very weak or there's something else going on, or you potentially have the wrong marker. Uh, the one on the right tells us that the iPad is not communicating with the swivel robot, so that means the cable is unplugged, or potentially there's some other issue going on there. So the charging and battery life, uh, they will tell us that the battery life lasts anywhere from four to six hours. Um, I will tell you that in some experience, we've seen it last a little longer. It all just depends on use we would recommend that you charge it every evening. So how to check the status of that battery. So inside the Swivel app itself, you're gonna to go to the robot settings and check the base and marker battery status. So you're gonna see a little robot icon that's gonna be the fourth icon down, it looks like, on the right-hand side inside of the app. And we see we have it highlighted here where it tells you the base battery and will give you a percentage. And then also you'll see the primary marker and any secondary markers as well with their percentages inside of the Swivel app. And this is the Swivel Teams app. So let's look at the back of the robot again. All right, so you're going to see a marker charge status at the back, and then you're going to see a base charge status. Those are two little LEDs. And this right here tells us what they might mean. So the marker charge status if it's flashing red, that means you've got less than 40% remaining on your battery. If it's flashing green, it's charging, or more than 40% of the battery is available. And solid green, it is fully charged. So the base charging status, flashing red, it's charging with less than a 40% battery. And flashing green, it's charging with more than a 40%. If it's solid green, it is fully charged. So let's talk about charging the swivel markers. This is with the C-Series, and there are two different types, and we're going to talk about that a little later. So the best practice they recommend is you're going to charge three markers if you have multiple markers at once with using the swivel base and charging. And you're going to use the hammerhead cable. And you're going to see they refer to that as a hammerhead cable because it has two different prongs on the end. And you can plug that into two different markers. So you charge two different markers with one cable. It's very convenient. Um, and you should have that four port charging block and also international adapters come, but we're not going to need those. All right, so the CX model charging, you're going to plug that base charging cable into the left-hand side port. And you're going to see it should be labeled that that's a 2.4 amp port. And you always want to use the leftmost side cable to charge the base. That's what they recommend because it puts out more... Um, energy and it's just going to charge more quickly, more efficiently uh, using that left-hand side port. So you're going to charge the swivel robot and marker nightly as they recommend. And the primary marker will always charge in the charging dock that's built into the top of the swivel robot. And it should be directly behind where the iPad sits in that cradle grip or sleeve, however you want to refer to it. Just make sure you line it up properly because the contacts are only on one side of the marker. So if you try to slot it in incorrectly or the wrong way, it will not charge. Just make sure those gold contacts line up. So this is the CX. Um, and you see they're gonna recommend also that you charge it in the left-hand slot, I believe. And it looks very, very similar to what the other device uh, charger comes with as well. But you're gonna use that hammerhead cable to charge multiple markers at once if you have multiple markers. All right, so plugging in and charging the Swivel Robot itself. So the best practice tip is to set up a regularly daily routine. Again, we would recommend just charge it at the end of the day uh, or whenever you're finished with the device, just plug it in and let it charge. And then when you come back tomorrow morning, it should be fully charged and ready to go. And you can see the cable just slots into that small round power slot on the back of the device. All right, so let's look more in depth to the markers here. So the primary marker, this is what the teacher is going to always wear. Uh, it comes with a um, little cradle that you can snap it in and wear it around your neck. Uh, or you can actually attach that to your clothing, to a collar or something as well. There's a little clip on the back if you don't want to wear it around your neck. 
and the secondary markers are to place around the classroom to capture other student audio. Uh, if you're obviously teaching remote students that are at home, but you have students in the classroom, if you have secondary markers, you can set those around the classroom to help pick up the other student audio so that the students at home can hear those students better as they participate throughout the lesson. Uh, so you're going to see that neck lanyard that has the little marker clip and you can uh, combine those together and wear it or just use the clip itself and clip it to your clothing. So this is the C-Series marker. So you're going to see the power icon that has that universal power icon up top. You're going to see the red record start stop and you're going to see that audio jack at the bottom. It just looks like a regular headphone port. That's also how it charges with that uh, hammerhead cable if needed as well. And you're going to see the little dial in the center. So the center is where you pause and stop the robot tracking you. And then the left and right are just navigational slides. And up down is for bookmarking, which is the pro feature, which is only going to work if you have a pro license. And you can see the microphone is at the one end right there, and you can easily see that. So let's look at the C-Series. So you're going to use that primary marker to pause and resume tracking on the robot. So if you're doing something and you say, hey, I don't need the robot to track me right now, you're just going to tap that center button once, and it will pause tracking on that robot. And when you're ready to resume the, the device to track you, just hit that again, and it will resume tracking you as you move around the room. So the primary marker on the C-Series is indicated by two green LED lights, uh, one above and one below the power icon button. So the swivel base only follows the primary marker. That's very important, very vital. So if you get the markers confused, it's not going to follow you. You're going to figure that out fairly quickly. Uh, it's always black. It tracks the teacher, has the teacher microphone built into it, and it can control the robot movements and can mute the secondary markers. So if you do have secondary markers and say things are getting a little rowdy in the classroom and you want to cut those off, uh, while you're speaking to those students, uh, as well as cutting your mic off, you can do that with this primary marker. So the secondary markers will come and uh, have labels on them usually, so that will help you determine that they are secondary markers. But these again are to collect audio in the classroom, so you would spread them around the room to help pick up audio in the room. So they're indicated by the one green LED light. They will not be tracked by the robot. Um, and it enables the audio tracks to be heard individually during playback on Swivel Teams. If you have a Swivel Teams uh, setup, you could potentially cycle in on just the audio from one particular tracker or marker. Um, all right, so we're going to move on. Again, this is just reinforcing our markers here. The primary marker is always for the teacher that they should wear. Secondary markers go around the classroom. You can see those markers look a little different. They have an LED on the front to the bottom. We're going to talk about that in just a second. So this is the CX. So again, you have that gray power icon and you have that red record icon for start and stop on the recording. And the audio jack charging port is that headphone jack at the bottom. And we see they have the click wheel for center to pause and resume tracking, left and right navigational slides and up down for bookmarking again a pro feature. Important notice here, you're going to see it's different. This has an LED light kind of in the center at the bottom, uh, and that denotes whether the marker is primary or secondary because these don't have labels like some of the other ones do. And you're going to see that microphone icon as well, so we're going to talk about what that looks like. So the LED light will indicate whether the marker is primary, so it's going to have a white LED light lit up if it is the primary marker. Secondary, it could be blue, green, red, orange, or purple, and it will turn off 15 seconds to save the battery if it's uh, after you turn it on so the LED light is not always lit up and always draining that battery. So when you turn it on, you're going to see for 15 seconds, it's either going to light up white if it's the primary, and if it's a secondary one, it will be blue, green, red, orange, or purple. And then after 15 seconds, the LED light gets turned off to save battery life. All right, so you can see the primary markers. You have the two green lights and a white LED on the front. And again, just reinforcing the idea that it will turn off after about 15 seconds to save battery. Um, you can tap the power button to see it turn on again if you're confused about which marker is which. 
And again, that swivel base will only ever follow that primary marker, so it's vital that the teacher keep that one on them because that's the one they're going to need to control everything. It tracks the teacher, has the microphone, it can control the robot's movements, and you can also mute those secondary markers. So again, this is the same concept as the other uh, markers that we looked at earlier. This is just a different model, so they look and function slightly differently, but again, these are to place around the classroom if you have them to collect that secondary student audio that's in the room, and you're gonna see that they're indicated by color that they're uh, a separate marker that is a secondary marker, and these will never be tracked by the robot. And you can control certain things uh, with the Swivel Teams platform about these markers if you have a pro license. So marker placement, this is the recommended marker placement. So they recommend you wear it kind of at heart height on your uh, person. Uh, you can use the lanyard or the clip, but you should never hold it in your hand because it is going to muffle the audio and also interfere with the tracking because um, it's going to try to line up on that marker, and if you're holding it in your hand, more than likely it might be low. Uh, so the camera would be pointed lower than you expect it to. Um, and if you're wearing items around your neck, you know, whether it's a uh, you know, necklace or you know, ID card lanyards or other things like that, they recommend that you kind of keep those separate because if items are hitting the marker uh, and making noise, it could obviously interfere with uh, the quality of the sound recording if that marker is getting kind of banged around and hit up on other lanyards that might have ID cards, badges, or if it's, you know, a clunky necklace or something like that. So the marker LEDs, so two red flashing lights indicate that we got a low battery or that it needs a firmware update. So if you want to mute the marker, so while you're streaming, you can mute the primary and secondary marker at once. So you're going to firmly double click the red button on your primary marker and it's going to mute all markers if you have secondary markers as well and they will flash green while they're in the mute mode. And to un unmute, you're gonna firmly double click the red button on your primary marker and it will uh, unmute all the devices. So live streaming with Swivel. Let's actually see how this is going to work now that we're familiar with the equipment. There are several options to do this. What we're gonna focus on today is the integrated audio setup. So that's where you're gonna broadcast the remote student audio using your computer speakers or interactive display or other integrated speakers. So if it's a clear touch or a smart board, uh, some type of interactive board, you're gonna be using that device with that device audio broadcasting through the room. Now you may have to use a USB-A to USB-A cable. If you do, then you're gonna have a cable connected constantly from your swivel robot to your computer and you're going to be limited or constricted by the length of that cable. Uh, the district did purchase Swivel Link devices which allows you to have a wireless connection for that integrated audio and it just resembles a large flash drive. You can see it in the lower right hand corner and we're going to look at that a little bit further and that's going to be I'd say the preferred method is to always going to be, be using the Swivel Link which hopefully most of you have. The district did provide a large number of them. Uh, I think there were a couple of schools that did not order the links and they had to order USB-A to USB-A cables. And again, that's a USB-A to USB-A cable. It's not a standard USB cable. It's mail on both ends. So one end will plug into the robot, one end will plug into the computer. Uh, and if you're using a Mac device or something that doesn't have a standard USB-A port, you will need a adapter. The newer MacBooks have USB-C. Uh, so you would need a USB-C to USB-A adapter for that to function properly, regardless whether you're using the Swivel Link for wireless or the Swivel, the USB-A to A cable setup. So again, with integrated audio, so you're going to integrate Swivel with the teacher computer using a Swivel Link for wireless or a USB-A cable. So the remote student audio would be broadcast through the classroom speakers or the computer speakers and you're going to project the live stream for the in-class students and then you're going to screen share digital content through the live screen because we know that that is the primary way that your remote students are going to get instruction is through a screen share whether you're you know sharing a web page sharing a presentation sharing a whiteboard you have to always remember to share that screen uh, 
through the software and through the Google Meet so that these uh, remote students can see it properly. So live streaming with Google Meet integrated audio. Let's take a look. So this is what a typical setup might look like if you're using the USB-A to USB-A cable. You're going to see we have our computer. Uh, this is a Mac with a USB-C port, it looks like, because I can notice there's a little adapter there that the USB-A cable is plugged into, and that's going into our swivel robot with our iPad on top, and that USB-A to USB-A cable would have to be connected the entire time, and you would be constricted by the length of that cable, because obviously it can only be so far apart with that cable connected. So here is our required equipment. So you're going to have this swivel robot, you're going to have that lightning cable that comes with the robot that's going to plug into the iPad. And again, if you have an iPad that is not a lightning iPad, some of the newer iPads use a USB-C port. Uh, there is also an adapter and separate cable that they sell as well for that. You, there's the USB-A to USB-A cable. If you're not using a swivel link for the wireless audio, that cable is going to be required. And that cable is not included as part of the swivel kit. That's something that your school has to purchase separately. And I know a couple of schools did go ahead and purchase those separately. Uh, whatever type of PC or laptop you're going to be using, uh, you're going to have a floor stand hopefully to set it on, uh, just so you can have some flexibility replacement around the room. And it will also come with an Android micro USB cable, but we're not using Android devices, so you shouldn't really need that. And then of course you should have an iPad available to you to run this as well. So our first time setup, you're going to need the Google Meet and Teams by Swivel app on your iPad. Uh, if you received an iPad from the district, these apps are already installed. Uh, many of your schools that purchased iPads for this, we pushed it out through a mobile device management system if they're enrolled in it. I know some schools do not have their teacher iPads enrolled in mobile device management, so you may have to install these apps yourself. If you have a teacher iPad that was given to you by your school that is not enrolled, just go to the app store on the iPad and search for Google Meet and Teams by Swivel. Those are the two icons. That's what you're looking for. Those are the only two required apps that you're going to need. So you're going to connect the mobile device to the robot and press and hold down the power button to turn on the robot. So this is very vital and very important. So every time that you slot that iPad into the swivel and you turn it on, and you plug in that lightning cable to the iPad, you're gonna see a pop-up that says allow to enable root access or the message might change if the software updates. But every single time you're gonna to have to hit allow. Uh, this basically is what allows the iPad and the swivel robot to communicate with each other. If you say ignore or dismiss it some other way, they can't talk to each other, so it's not gonna work. So every single time you plug that in, make sure you always hit allow, otherwise it will not work correctly or at all really because they can't communicate with each other, the two devices. So we're gonna turn on our markers by pressing that power button, which is that gray button that has that universal power symbol on the side. It is not the red record button, it is the gray button. And this is gonna be very important. If you ever see a firmware update prompt it is vital that you always update it. Don't ever skip it. Always update the firmware. Uh, more than likely, the first time you plug these devices in, they will ask to update the firmware because the firmware has obviously been updated from what was pre-installed from the factory. That contains bug fixes, new features. Um, you definitely want to always do it. It is vital that you do it. Anytime you see this, please allow it to update. Don't ever skip it or dismiss it. Uh, it's there for a reason, and you want to make sure you're always running the latest and greatest version of that firmware. Also in this presentation that we're going to share out that link with, um, many of you probably have already seen the, the link. The first time set up for the Swivel link, that is a uh, link that you can please click inside of this presentation, and it's going to take you to a web page with Swivel that has very detailed instructions if you run into difficulty with setting up the swivel link. Uh, if it's not working correctly, if you're getting error messages, things like that, that link will basically walk through all the steps on how to troubleshoot and fix any issue that you run into with the swivel link. So you're going to remove the, the charging cable from the robot and we're going to try to pair our link so you do not press that red button at any time as it will cancel the pairing procedure i really wish they would kind of you know put something on the actual device that says what that 
button does because you'll see there's absolutely no label. It's just a little tiny red button and an LED. Uh, you may want to press it. Don't ever press it. Um, it's only going to mess things up. Yeah, you may have to do it as part of the troubleshooting, but please don't ever press that red button unless you are troubleshooting the device and that's part of the procedures. So you're going to open that settings tab inside of the uh, Swivel Teams app and it's going to be the second one down that looks like a cog or a gear and you're going to select base port configuration. Um, and you're going to see it pop up and you're going to have several options. You want to make sure you select link. That tells it that you want to use the swivel link to relay the audio to your device, to your computer. You're not going to be using anything else. All right, so we're going to connect the swivel link to the USB port on the robot base. And if it needs to update, you're going to see that pop up and update. And please don't ever stop it. Just let it do what it needs to do. And you may also get a pop-up notification about the swivel link. If the pop-up says the marker mode is microphone only, press that change configuration at the bottom. And then you want to make sure it says wireless connection. If it says wireless connection, you're going to say keep current. So we see swivel link configuration, you see wireless connection, and you see kind of a pictograph there of a wireless swivel link device to where it's wirelessly talking to the robot, to the computer. So if you see wireless connection, say keep current. If you see microphone only, select change configuration down at the bottom. All right, so you may have to connect the device again. It may ask you to unplug it. If it does, just unplug it and replug it back in. And then we're going to open the tab here and select link again if needed. And again, we're just going through these steps here. If it asks you to unplug it, plug it back in. Just make sure you select wireless connection. All right, so once that is all connected, you're actually going to unplug the swivel link device from the swivel robot and you're going to plug it into your computer. So again, if you have a MacBook that has USB-C, you will need a USB-C to USB-A adapter to plug into this device. Now, if you're using the USB-A cable, then you're going to have to plug in one end of that USB-A cable to the back of the uh, swivel robot into that USB port and plug in the other end to the uh, USB-A port on your computer. And again, the same thing holds true here. If you have a USB-C device, you're going to need a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And just remember, you're going to be constricted by the length of that cable. So once we've done that, at your teacher computer that it's plugged into, you're going to launch Google Meet. And if you already have an event set up in your Google Calendar or something already scheduled, you're just going to click into it to launch it. Then you're going to go down to the uh, three dots, usually at the bottom of the screen, and go into the settings. And once you get into settings, you're going to go under audio, and you're going to select swivel as the microphone on your teaching computer device, whether this is a laptop or a desktop, whatever you're using in the classroom. Uh, to like share your presentation, share your screen from that's hosting the Google Meet, that particular device, whether it's a laptop or desktop. So go to the three dots, go to settings, go to audio, and you're going to select the swivel audio input device. That tells it that you're using that swivel link or that USB-A to USB-A cable as the microphone for your Google Meet and your computer, not the computer's built-in microphone. And you're going to also turn the video off on your teacher computer because you're not going to be sharing uh, the webcam from your teaching computer device. You're going to be sharing the webcam from your iPad that connects to the Google Meet. So we're going to go back to the iPad, open the Swivel Teams app, and you're going to, at the home screen, you're going to tap that Google Meet icon. And the first time you do this, you're going to see several other, other video platforms. We are only supporting Google Meet, so don't you try to use Microsoft Teams or WebEx or Zoom. Uh, Google Meet is the preferred platform. We have enterprise licenses, so we have all these extra features and recording capability, so please use the Google Meet option. 
And once you do that, Teams will remember your selection the next time, so you won't be presented with all those. It's just going to default to the Google Meet option. Uh, but for whatever reason, if you ever needed to change it, you're going to see a Other Apps button, and you could choose a different platform. So to join the Google Meet session, you're going to click that Google Meet icon, and it will pop you over to Google Meet, where you could type in a code to join the meeting that you had set up. I would highly recommend that if you are logged in with your district credentials, which you should be inside of Google Meet on that iPad. If you've added this event to your calendar, it's just going to already show up, which makes it very convenient. All you have to do is tap that event inside of Google Meet, and you're going to pop right into the meeting and not have to type in the Google Meet code on the iPad. Now you're going to mute the microphone on your iPad because again we're not using the audio from the iPad, we're not using its microphone, we're using the audio from our swivel link or from that USB-A to USB-A cable that might be hooked up. But you're going to mute that microphone on the iPad and then you're going to turn down the iPad speaker volume with the little audio rocker on the iPad because again we're not using the iPad volume either. Not using the microphone, not using the speakers on the iPad. We're going to be using the webcam only on the iPad. So this has a step-by-step -step audio setup guide link, so if you run into issues and need some troubleshooting help, please leverage that as well. It goes into far more detail than we can do here today. So now we're going to dive into a live demo of actually how this might look in a classroom. And we're just going to dive through the particulars and just show you an example because I know reading and talking about it is one thing. Actually doing it sometimes can be something completely different. So we're going to dive into a live demo here in just a moment and allow you to see that process. All right, hello again. We're going to go ahead and try to do a live demo real quick. So I've already got my uh, swivel robot set up. I've got my iPad on my robot. I have my marker around my neck. I've already got it turned on. I've already gone into the settings and set my base core configuration to be the link, which is what we need. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my link and plug it in. On the USB port. All right, and it's just confirming that I want the wireless connection, so I'm going to say keep current. All right, so now at this point, I need to take my link from the robot and plug it into my computer. So I'm going to disconnect my link from the robot. I'm using a MacBook that has USB C, so you can see I already have a dongle here, but I have to plug it into my dongle. Right, and I'm going to go to the meet settings on my uh, computer. And inside the meet settings, I need to go to audio and change it to the swivel link audio device. So I'm going to save that. All right, so now when I return to my link, my Google Meet icon is going to be lit up, where it's prior to that, it's gray, meaning that it operate or can't use it because there might be an issue. And the issue here was it was waiting on me to move the link from my robot to my computer because it's not going to work until we do that. If you're using a cable, it might be grayed out because your cables are not plugged in from your robot to your computer. It could also potentially be grayed out just simply because you're not logged into Google Meet on the iPad. You need to open up Google Meet that first time and log into it. So now I can hit my uh, Google Meet icon, there's going to be a little wizard that kind of will walk you through some things the first time. You can say, don't show this again. It's going to open up Google Meet for me. I'm already logged in, so I see I've created a calendar event, so I don't have to type in a code. So I can just say I want to join this meeting in progress now. And I'm going to go ahead and before I need to join in the green room is what it's called inside of Google Meet. You can cut your microphone off. And remember, you need to cut the microphone off from the iPad because we're not using it on the iPad. And I can go ahead and click join. Now I'm joined here. And you should see we're recording. And remember, they say to wear it at about heart height. So I just use, there's a little clip on the back. It's where you can kind of pull and adjust to pull it up. 
so that the camera is more in the correct angle and you can adjust as needed. So now you can move around the room and the swivel is seeing you. But now if you'll notice probably in this recording, what is the recording seeing? The recording is seeing who's currently talking. That's who the recording is seeing. They're not necessarily seeing my swivel camera in the recording. So see, I can just kind of walk around the classroom and you can see it's gonna follow me. And again, adjust the height of that to make sure that you stay framed appropriately. I will tell you that sometimes if you're very quick, you can walk past it, it will lose you. So you may have to join back or to pick you back up. So it's just a trial and error to play around with it the first time you get it. And obviously the further back you are or it sees. But again, think about that recording. That recording is seeing whoever's talking, which is seeing the webcam on our big clear touch display right now. But if I wanted the students to see me in the recording, what the swivel is seeing, or even if I'm in the Google Meet and I want the kids to see it, you know, if there's something that I'm doing in the classroom, whether it's, you know, working at a whiteboard, um, chalkboard, bulletin board, working with manipulatives, whatever it may be, we need to move around that room. So we need to pin this. So we're going to go to our Google Meet and I'm going to share my screen. And I would just recommend save your entire screen so no matter what you switch between, they're going to see it. And we need to pin my video. So I'm going to pin the video. Now, in the recording, this makes sure that they see me in the recording from the swivel iPad camera. Otherwise, the most likely going to see an avatar on your computer, because remember on your computer, you're going to cut your web camera off on your computer because you're not using it. Uh, I'm in a meeting room, so it's a slightly different setup that I'm leveraging here today than the traditional classroom. So that's why we have the big webcam up on the camera display. So being that I am sharing my entire screen on my laptop and I pinned my own video on my laptop, so now in the recording, they see me moving around in the room if they couldn't watch, I participate live today. Uh, and even if you're not recording, if you want students to see you and you want to make sure that every student sees you, you just ask them to pin your iPad video as they're watching it on their own machine. Now, obviously, most of remote teaching, I would say, is going to be a screen share. You're going to be sharing, you know, a Google slide presentation, maybe a website that you're, you know, working on. Could be Canvas if you're going through something in Canvas modules with your students. Um, and you would just simply switch the tab over, and that's what they would see when they were inside the recording. I'm going to switch tab over here. So I'm just going to go to my dashboard. So I could be following through something on my computer, whether it be a presentation, Canvas modules, whatever it may be, and I'm sharing my screen so that everyone can see it. Uh, I pinned you know, the recording. So when I switch back over to my Google Meet screen, now they see me again. So just keep that in mind. And it's something you have to play with. But I hope this has been very helpful and informative today. Uh, just please reach out to Stephanie, Lisa, and myself if you have any questions or concerns and we can try to help you the best we can. Uh, we're going to provide links to all this documentation we discussed today in this video, so you'll be able to quickly pull that up and go through it. Uh, and hopefully, this has uh, prepared you to be able to teach with Swivel for remote learning, should we have to go back to remote learning, or if you have students in quarantine, then obviously they still need to continue with their instruction while they're at home. All right, so thank you very much. Goodbye.